Okay. The time is now six o'clock, and I call to order the November 4th, 2019 regular meeting of the City of West Sacramento Transportation, Mobility, and Infrastructure Commission. We'll begin today's uh, commission hearing with the Pledge of Allegiance, led tonight by Commissioner Parker. to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. That brings us to the general administration function part one for tonight's agenda. Item 1A, presentations by the public on matters not on the agenda within the jurisdiction of the commission. Madam Clerk, are there any requests to speak? There are no requests to speak. Thank you. Moving on to item 1B then, commissioner communications. Commissioners, are there any communications? Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda portion of the agenda. Is there a motion regarding the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to move the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Parker, a second by Commissioner Wetzel. All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it and the motion carries. Zooming on along to item, oh, I apologize. Item three was hole punched by me. That was part of the consent agenda as well, but I believe we've now approved it. Mm -hmm. Moving on to item four on the regular agenda, presentation on a co-location agreement with Sacramento Valley Limited Partnership, DBA Verizon Wireless. Good evening. My name is John Robinson. I'm Deputy City Manager. Uh, the purpose of the report that I'm presenting tonight is to give the Commission the opportunity to provide feedback and hopefully recommend Council approval of the proposed agreement with Verizon Wireless, which would facilitate um, installation of Verizon Wireless small cell equipment on um, city infrastructure. I'll provide a brief overview and then I can respond to policy level questions and hopefully while I'm speaking, the Verizon representatives will show up behind me um, to um, respond to any technical questions that you may have about their equipment and whatnot. I suspect I may have told them the meeting is at 6.30, so their absence here is probably not their fault. Um, the need for the agreement that's before you this evening is brought about by changes that are happening in the telecommunications industry. Basically, the cellular towers that we've become accustomed to, the kind of uh, great big facilities that um, serve a broader area, don't have the bandwidth to serve the number of, of uh, the pieces of equipment that are out there and the, the number of people and the types of equipment that are going to be needed going forward. So the telecommunications industry worldwide is moving towards a small cell technology, which as the name implies, involves a, a greater number of smaller facilities that are kind of located within line of sight of each other across a network that way. And it makes sense to place those on existing city infrastructure as opposed to on their own dedicated poles that would need to be sprinkled all throughout the community. So. Yeah, there she is. So um, to the extent then that each of those facilities would necessitate a permit from the city, it makes sense to have kind of one broader agreement that embodies you know, the agreement between the city and the provider in terms of how, those, how that construction will be handled and how you know, repairs and maintenance and all those uh, logistical issues will be dealt with. So that's, that's the agreement that's, that you have before you tonight. Um, I lost my place in my notes. Um, the, again, the purpose we're here, we'd like to get uh, your feedback and comments on the document, and ideally uh, we're requesting a motion uh, recommending approval of the document by the council. It will go to the city council this week, which means the council already has the report, but we, will, we, will, we knew this was going to happen, so we will have your comments put into basically an errata sheet that the council will get. So the fact that we're two days away doesn't mean that they won't get your comments. We'll just get them in a separate document to them. So. With that, I'd be happy to try and answer any of your questions or refer them to Verizon. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Commissioners, are there any comments or questions? Uh, thank you so much uh, for coming and providing information on um, everything. I have a, just a couple of just very basic questions um, with regards to how the technology works a little bit better. So. Okay. Um, so one of the questions is that, um, you know, if you're using some of the existing infrastructure that you have, 
Uh, is there wires tied to the cellular technology that you need conduit and all that infrastructure of wires and all of that, or is it just uh, they're talking to each other, so therefore the signals are kind of uh, amongst each other? Hi, thanks so much for having me here tonight. I'm Dana Diamond, and I'm with Verizon Wireless. So when you're talking about the existing network, you're talking yeah. about the macro network? Right. I guess the, this technology coming in, is it... All cells. Right. Is it, if it's tied to like the poles and everything like that, does there, um, is there a need for conduit within the current city infrastructure to make it all work together? I'm still not quite okay, understanding sorry. the question. Are you asking if we're going to use city conduit or if we run our own? Yeah, a little bit of the techni technicalities of that. Like, how, do, how does the wiring all come together? Does it go through this, um, like, s existing city pipes that have uh, other conduit or you have your own? So the answer is actually both. Okay. Um, so for power, our hope would be that we would be able to use the city conduit because it's existing. Um, it makes it to where we don't have to dig up the foundations. Um, but when we bring in our fiber network, that's going to be our own because we need to have dark fiber um, to run the technology that, to the best of its, of its abilities. Right. So we'll be running fiber, which will be new. And for the power, we would like to actually use the existing conduit if there's enough room. Okay, great. And then the other question is, um, um, obviously, there's many different companies within this space. That's true. Um, so I, and maybe it's for the city's question here is just other competitors, other members of the market. How is, I know in some cases you use different cell towers um, for different networks. Um, would there be like different micro cells or are they sharing? I, that's another technical question. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, no, that's that's one of the that's one of the situations that's contemplated in the agreement. So there's a yeah. whole. I, I probably couldn't point to them by memory, but there's there's a whole series of provisions in there that account for you know if if there's Verizon equipment on a pole and another carrier comes and wants to put equipment on the pole, the city can consider that, but we have to make sure we do it in a way that doesn't impair Verizon's use of the equipment that we already agreed to let them have there. And really, the intent overall is to create to get, to facilitate a competitive marketplace. So we're not we're not this isn't an agreement to solely work with Verizon. We'll probably use this agreement as a template to work with other providers. Mm -hmm. And then it also accounts for kind of a, an orderly way to deal with requests that come in to put the equipment on the pole. So for example, we've thought of what if somebody comes and wants to apply for all the poles in the whole city and then just Right. permit them all and then build them out over the next 50 years like we we, we don't allow that so there's a, there's kind of a there's a clock on that so when you apply you have to do something within a certain period of time or that poll comes back you know unreserved and it's available for other carriers so a lot of those kinds of issues are contemplated in the agreement great and then um, oh I had another question but it slipped my mind so okay. I'm, I'm fine thank you commissioners other questions or comments? Yes, thank you. Um, what I didn't see, in, in I know this is an agreement between provider and city on the terms in which it would um, you would permit each of these facilities. Right. Um, what I didn't see out of this, and maybe this isn't in the process yet, is a um, set of design guidelines. Are those being created, or are those are there a set of design guidelines already in place such that these um, devices don't create a visual nuisance? Right now, there there are, and we're we're working on an update to those that will come back separately. So there there are preclusions on you know, sort of limits federally uh, to on the extent to which the local jurisdiction can regulate aesthetics. But to the extent we can legally, there will be a, there will be a document that comes back that will have that will have that in it separately from this from this document. Other questions? I'm just curious. Um, how many of these uh, towers do, do they does Verizon anticipate um, installing, and, or, and what's the frequency? How how many how far apart will they be, and what's the overlap in coverage? I, I think I can anticipate that the total number is going to be proprietary. Cause I think that same question was asked oh. before, but I'll I'll maybe let you have a go at the how many they how close they have to be. I don't remember. Yeah. So, 
John's right. The, um, as far as the overall number, um, I can't disclose that because it is proprietary. It's competitive information. Uh, and as far as how far apart they need to be, it depends on the technology. So it depends on if it's a 4G cell site or a 5G cell site. Other questions? Between the 4G and 5G, what is that range then of the proximity between cell sites? So I have to be honest, the answer there is also it depends. Um, West Sacramento is pretty flat, um, but it does depend on topography. It depends on the trees in the area, believe it or not. Um, so for a 4G cell site, they can be about 1,000 feet apart. For a 5G cell site, they need to be a lot closer than that. Don't get worried. We don't plan to come in and just blanket the city. Um, these will be an, on an as-needed basis only. Um, but the technologies work very differently, and so they have different needs. I was just also wondering, uh, what is, is, has there been any other cities in California or in the area that have adopted a very similar um, working agreement with Verizon or any other um, carriers, uh, providers, um, that this is modeled after? or um, And if so, how has that worked out? Was that question for me or for, for the city? Both of you, probably for the city, but... Uh, We actually we didn't we didn't look at we didn't look at other jurisdictions' documents. We started as the the template for this was a similar agreement that we had with AT and T. So we didn't actually we didn't actually research you know what other jurisdictions are doing. We started with with our own document. So I I, I don't maybe you can sure. elaborate. Um, I've been in my current position for about a year and a half, um, and I've negotiated several of these agreements in Northern California, and then I work collaboratively with my Southern California counterparts as well. Um, there are several agreements that we have um, throughout the state of California, and we even have some in Nevada and, of course, across the country. Um, but this is very comparable to other agreements um, in, in many ways, and uh, while... I don't think the city may have reviewed other agreements. It seems maybe your city attorney had um, because a lot of the terms in the agreement are pretty standard mm -hmm. across other cities as well. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, good. Parker. Thank you. And maybe this might be for Verizon, but is there any, what does the anticipated rollout look like? How, how long does installation take for for the small cells, is there is there sp you know specific geographies that you look for first? I guess um, you know it'd be it'd be nice to understand how it gets rolled out as as you look towards implementation, how that affects um, disadvantaged communities. That's a, an opportunity yeah. for um, supporting those communities. So just curious how that that looks for you. So what we're gonna do? Um, we hope to have the agreement finalized on Wednesday uh, through your city council. And then we will take a close look, and we have already um, agreed to work with the city um, in choosing those locations through the poll reservation process and things like that. Um, we need to know a couple of things. Um, where do we have a need, uh, especially when it comes to 4G? And then um, we've been working with people on your city staff regarding disadvantaged communities where those are, where they would like to see some of the sites. So we really picture this being a collaborative effort. Um, and we've already been in discussions with the city about some of their desired results. And of course, we have our own. So we'd like to mirror those together. Thank you. I guess I just have one comment too for this the city. Um, I, I have seen uh, working in Sacramento, they, they've implemented a, a partnership with Verizon for 5G technology and small cell. One of the components of that um, rollout, I don't know if it was um, connected to it, but they have an agreement um, to actually have um, public Wi-Fi in, in 27 of the, the community parks. And I think that there's an opportunity there, obviously, we're not on the Parks Commission or, or the Utility Commission, but I think there are um, advantages to having that, that offering from a, a public convenience perspective. Um, so just as you continue to explore these, um, seeing if there's opportunity to layer in those types of concessions would be really great. Got it, thank you. I have an additional uh, additional question for the city. Okay. Um, 6.1, it indicates that the annual 
uh, licensing fee, um, kind of ongoing fees, $250 per unit. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what the um, use of those funds will end up being um, by the, you know, how the city will use those funds um, in, in ongoing, if, if perhaps those funds could be used for um, helping or providing uh, broadband or other types of technologies to underserved communities, if there's any consideration for that. Um, I don't know that that has been considered. My understanding is that these go into the general fund and these go through the regular budget process like any other revenue, but that I can, I can certainly put that down as a comment that those could be sequestered and used for a specific purpose. Other questions, commissioners? Uh, if not, I have a, just a couple for myself. Okay. I wanna thank Commissioner Parker for raising the issue of disadvantaged communities hopefully not being left out of the deployment of the eventual 5G mini sites. I'm, I'm in complete agreement there. And as for myself, I'm not too familiar with the technology, so just so that I can get a better understanding. Is this something that would be like a box installed on a traffic light or a street light, or what, what would this look like, essentially? That's one, one iteration of it would be kind of a, I can let Dan speak to the dimensions, but kind of a, kind of a box looking thing. My understanding is there are different configurations depending on what infrastructure they're trying to go on. So there can be kind of a, kind of a bulb thing that goes on the top of a lamp pole. There can be kind of box shaped structures that go on the side on a pole or on a cross member. So it kind of, the, the look of them adapts to what they, what they need to put them on. But in terms of like the specific dimensions, maybe you could. Or if it's proprietary, I, I would yeah, understand yeah. as well. So that's not proprietary. Um, they can, we all know all the competitors. We all know what each other are doing. So the 4G configuration, of course, differs from the 5G configuration. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with any of the sites downtown. Uh, we have both, downtown Sacramento, that is, we have both 4G sites there and 5G sites there. Um, so the 4G site, there's an antenna on top of the pole. It's, it looks very, uh, it's integrated, so it looks like it was always part of the pole. Um, and then there are two radios that are mounted outside of the pole. It's very clean. Um, and for the 5G configuration, three antenna radio integrated units, kind of looks like speakers at the top of the pole. Um, it's very clean, very slimline. Um, it's not that you can't tell, but they are built in a way where it kind of looks like it was meant to be there. So um, that's one of the advantages to the master license agreement is we can put the poles, uh, we can put the installations on the city owned light standards because the installations are a lot cleaner. Thank you. Sure. I think that's, that's great that it's you know not too aesthetically disturbing of what residents are already used to and that it's relatively secure, it sounds yeah. like, from people who shouldn't be accessing them. Yes, um, the shortest piece of equipment is at nine feet. Um, granted, maybe your average basketball player could reach up, but it is the pg &E disconnect switch and it's locked. So even the lowest, most necessary piece of equipment is locked. And so with the designs you're mentioning there of the antennas or, or other devices higher up, would the same traffic light or street light be able to have multiple 5G uh, nodes from different companies or would it be something along the lines of one company would have their own pole? And Currently, one provider per pole. Okay. Um, my question, next question, and this is maybe for Mr. Robinson then, thank you, Ms. Diamond, is looking through the master agreement, I see there's a section on tree trimming, and that just comes to mind because of all the recent wildfires that have sometimes started by um, inadequate tree trimming. Right. And so is the way this is written, section 5.2 in the agreement, would this mean that the licensee would then be responsible for maintaining tree trimming around poles or lights from here on out? And if so, would there be a regular monitoring program or would that be something city staff would monitor and communicate then to the licensee? Um, I, give me just one moment, I, gotta, I have to reread re the section. Um, well, I think none, none, of this, none of this would absolve the city from the regular tree trimming that we would do normally to avoid impairment of our own infrastructure, but it looks to me as if this section is, it does put the onus on the licensee to do the tree trimming that's necessary to avoid their 
stuff being impacted. So you could foresee a situation where, you know, maybe a tree would be fine for our pole, but it might be ready to bump into something sticking off the top of the pole that would be their installation. So that would be a discussion that we would have with Verizon at that point. Yep, no, that makes sense. And, and I was looking at the sentence in there as well. Uh, by mutual agreement, one contractor may perform tree trimming for licensee, licensor, and other streetlight traffic signal pole users. And so I wasn't sure whom yeah. those other users would be. And I only bring up the point because I would want to hopefully make sure that the city or whomever is responsible for doing the observation would know who to contact to do that tree trimming and that there wouldn't be any uh, confusion there. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll, we'll know. I mean, there's a, there's a whole contact mechanism in this agreement. We'll have the same thing in other agreements and we'll know which poles have which company's equipment on them. So yeah, that will all be clear. Great. My only other question then is a little further on in the agreement, section 7.2, which is the safety inspection uh, section where uh, it says, except in circumstances where licensor has special reason to be concerned about potential violations, such inspection should be conducted no more frequently than once every three years. And so my first question there is, I don't know if this is a standard boilerplate or what would be a special reason to be concerned about potential violations. And then my second question is, why no more frequently than once every three years? Um, well, I can... I, I, I kind of wish I'd brought the city attorney on this because she, I'll, I'll be honest, I mean, she, she brought the, uh, the real experience in these agreements. And my recollection from this discussion is that, you know, this is kind of as the language would imply, if we, if we look and there's, you know, fluid leaking out of something or sparks are flying or, you know, something, there's some visual, visible reason, you know, we wanted to, the, the language needed to have a limit because in, you know, in, in the federal guidelines and in court cases and in other kind of guidance that's come from other levels of government, there have been efforts at local government levels to use permitting processes and inspections and other things to kind of impair the deployment of this technology. So there's kind of a federal preemption on that kind of thing. I would surmise that this language stemmed from that because there's places all throughout the document where local jurisdictions are preempted from certain kinds of regulatory activity on this technology because the federal government has deemed it a strategic priority to get this technology deployed nationwide. I, I don't know for sure. I would suspect that this, this kind of no more frequently language came from that and that the you know, except in circumstances clause is an attempt to make sure that the federal preemption doesn't preclude us from taking taking action when we see an imminent you know, danger of some kind. Well, I appreciate the information. And I, th I think it's great that the city is getting ahead on 5G deployment and having a master agreement such as this. Are there any other questions or comments from the commission? In that case, as Mr. Robinson noted, there is a recommended action to provide staff with comments and adopt a motion uh, summarizing those comments and recommending council approval of the agreement. Is there a motion? Uh, for that recommended motion. Uh, motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it and the motion carries. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> that wraps up the regular agenda. So moving on to general administration function part two. Item 5A, the Transportation Mobility and Infrastructure Commission calendar. The next regular meeting of the TMI Commission is scheduled for January 6, 2020, although I believe, Madam Clerk, we have a special meeting coming up as well. Yes, we have a meeting on Monday, December 4th. Great, and I have it on my calendar. I kind of jumped the gun on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. Okay. Moving on to item 5B, reports from city staff. No reports. Uh, moving on to item 5C, future agenda item requests by the commission. Commissioner Wetzel. Yeah, uh, periodically, we do get updates on some of the um, reports or the uh, citizen um, requests for information on uh, and complaints on um, different pothole thing, issues and um, traffic related issues, sidewalks, that type of stuff. Um, can we get another one of those reports at a future meeting? Uh, the upcoming December 4th meeting, there's uh, the request that we had received prior was a utilization on the uh, West Sacramento Connect app, including 
uh, information on potholes as well as striping or just basic maintenance items. So that is going to be coming to you uh, December 4th. So uh, at that time, John Robinson, who just left us, will right. be providing that report and uh, commission's free to ask questions regarding uh, other complaints uh, that have been moving forward in the city. I can tell you predominantly um, we have we have a number of complaints that come through. Right. Uh, as far as the traffic goes, uh, most of our complaints have to do with uh, potholes or general congestion in the city. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we can provide a little more information at that meeting on December 4th. Great, thank you so much. Any other future agenda item requests? Well, Commissioner Wetzel stole my, uh, my plan. He read my mind. I was going to ask about that follow-up as well. But the second item I wanted to follow up on uh, from the July meeting uh, that I requested was an update for the West Capitol Avenue Road Rehabilitation Project. I know we had originally heard it as a commission back in January, and I was looking at some of the uh, project updates online, and I think construction was supposed to start roughly around this time or maybe even a little earlier. So I'd love to just hear an update about what the schedule looks like and if there have been any changes. Vin K will be here at the December 4th meeting. So um, we do note all the requests that the commissioners uh, provide to us. I believe he will be here on December 4th to provide an update for you. Great, thank you. Seeing no other future agenda item requests, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Is there a motion? Second. <laughs> All, we have Sorry. A motion. I motion, second. motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> a motion to adjourn by Commissioner Polhemus. Second. <laughs> second by Commissioner Wetzel. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.